that the road, the road is literally rising off of the floor of the valley. I can't think of any other place that lets me let go of all of the world having hold of you and all of its needs. And the, you have the faith. That's you, We are called to live in the midst of, 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 of the hungers and the hurts and the needs of the world. God, that's what we're there for. You, you're called to live for those purposes. It's, it's that in the midst of all that, if you don't have the center of your being nurtured by what is beautiful, you begin to be you begin to dry out. And if you live for ethic alone, if all you do is live for ethic, then sooner or later it will get the it will get the best of you. It will eat your soul. If you do not nurture that which is beautiful at the center of it, you eventually become overwhelmed by the darkness, by the sense of futility, the sense that what difference does it make? You begin to be caught up that even your own spirit is compromised by what you have to do to get something done that isn't always pretty. And when you see all of that, you eventually reach a point where if you don't go to some place to be renewed, then you end up becoming a victim of the very calling you had to do something to the common good. And for me, that place was always Beulah Valley. Dare you see a soul at the white heat? Then crouch within the door. Red is the fire's common tint, but when the vivid ore has vanquished flame's conditions, it quivers from the forge without a color, but the light of unanointed blaze. Least village boasts its blacksmith, whose anvil's even ring stands symbol for the finer forge that soundless tugs within, refining these impatient oars with hammer and with blaze until the designated light repudiate the forge. As he gave me the sense of of understanding oral language and to savoring words and to sense the possibility of what words could do in terms of motivating people to the common good. If it's true that all the universe can be experienced in the drop of water, then all of the wonder of prime numbers should be experienced between two and three. So all the all of the patterns of of prime numbers should have their seed within the tension between two and three. And that is where the journey goes. That's where the story goes. I felt compelled to become for a while a story listener. I decided that I would go to a nursing home seeking those souls who would tie their ribbons to mine and help me feel and absorb the wave of creation from which I was born and upon which I live my routines. It was as if I was seeking some additional blessing to my ordination. I would not go with pity in my eyes and speak condescendingly about the weather. No, I would go passionately to listen. I would go to the nursing home seeking to be ministered to by these frail people who seemingly had nothing in life to live for. What do you say to people in care facilities? Lord, have mercy. To shut-ins. Christ, have mercy. When you go, you leave behind an empty chair for a day before someone else falls in line to wait. Lord, what a dismal place. 
I wasn't looking for it. That's when all of a sudden I found a video of the work of Georgia O'Keeffe. And in the middle of that despair is when I began to realize that whatever she was doing was, a, was where I needed to be in a different way, but needed to be in that experience. And for that, at that point, I started putting away ology or the study of and started seeing life as poetry and to live it as poetry and to see it as a pursuit of what is art and what is beautiful. And that would change everything, but it came out of the depths of, of being broken. It was in being broken that I was able to discover what I wasn't on my own able to find. That's um, Emily, of course, I can't have this conversation without her, but she, you know, she talks about the white, the, you know, dare, I, I think I read you the poem the other night, um, uh, dare you see a soul in the white heat. And it's, you know, she's talking about that moment of walking around the table yeah. and writing on the chalkboard. And, you know, and, and it's that, it's, it's the frightening, beautiful, seducing moment of yeah. somebody looking at the canvas and bringing it up and like, I see it, you know. To be in that place with oh, another zone. human being, is, is, is wonderful to be in that yes. place. And it's one where it's, you do not interrupt that. And then, but then to have that exquisitely with another human, to be in tandem with it, it's almost, it, it is truly Pentecost. That something is true. But my God, it's beautiful. And you want, and it's not something that's beautiful that you name. It's something that's beautiful. You only stand in the middle of it, and you're simply alive because you delight. You delight. You delight. You are in the light, mm. as he is in the light, and you have fellowship one with another. And when that happens, as the end of that little scripture goes, the darkness takes. Don't worry about the darkness. I take care of the dark. You just dwell in the light as I'm in the light and have fellowship. Mm. That's what it is to be alive. of the valley giving you a sense of, of, of a renewing energy of light and proportion and the sense of, of joy that you had missed while you were so busy administrating what you thought was the centerpiece. And it was, it was central to what it meant to be alive for the common good. If you don't have a Beulah Valley at the center of your being, it's so easy to become cynical it's so easy to become skeptical. It's so easy to become a victim of everything you hope for. So that's why I always came back to Beulah. And I always came back with the hope of saying in a prayer, Oh God, when this is all over with, give me a chance just for a while to come back to Beulah on a one-way ticket. And that's where I am. <laughs>